before we left Maribara, we cleaned out Dibby's and one of the cheap shops of their inflatables so that when we head to Eli Creek, we've all got something to float down on. Fraser Island, the speed limit on the beach, at least on the uh, 70 mile east beach, is 80 kilometres per hour. And everywhere else, there, there are signs when there's variations to that. And inland, when you're doing the inland tracks, it's 30 kilometres per hour. So they're the speed limits they ask you to abide by to keep it safe for everyone. First impressions, I'm pretty excited. Oh, yeah? It'll be a pretty cool few days. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It's so beautiful. So driving on the beach, obviously we've got our tyre pressures right and I'm just looking where the firmer sand is. You can usually see where someone else has driven so we're sort of following along through there. Um, you can turn off traction control, that helps you as well. High mode, high four is what we have it in at the moment and that's ideal for sand driving. But if it gets bogged and really soft and you have a few problems getting through, you can kick it down to low four to help you get through that. But we're just racing along here now. High tide was, sorry, low tide was about an hour and a half ago, maybe nearly two hours ago. And this part of the beach down the south of uh, Fraser Island, you can only get through this bit at low tide. We've got 35 kilometers of beach driving after we've just got off the ferry. We know that because we checked it out on the HEMA map. So we bought one of these maps before we left uh, Maribara and that's the map that has all of the detailed tracks and your driving routes and everything around Fraser Island. So it's really what you need to get hold of so that you can plan your routes and it has information um, about the safest routes and tides and that sort of thing as well. So we used a HEMA map when we went up to Cape York. So along the toll tally track, we have one for the north and south. If you haven't watched those videos, check them out. But it's really detailed, it tells you where there's water crossing, things to look out for, kilometres between individual stops. So this whole trip, we're going to be using it to plan out exactly what we do. We won't be relying on Google for this one. So the ferry landing came over from Inskip Point across to here, down the bottom of Fraser Island. And what we've done is we've taken off along the beach, gone around Hook Point at low tide, which is nice and easy. We've continued all the way up along the beach here, 35 k to Dilly Village, and then we started our trek inland, coming up the Southern Lakes Road. We're just pulling up at Lake Boomagen. We're just going to stop in here quickly, have a little look at the lake, grab some apples, and then continue on through to Central Station Campground. It's a fence picnic area here. Yeah, all the dingo fencing. This is just a little seasonal breakdown of what's happening and we're here in spring. So we've rolled in in October, right in the middle of spring and it's pup season. Heaps of pups around. And what they're worried about is people feeding the pups and you know looking after them and then becoming dependent on people to survive, which is not a good thing for them, or, nor Fraser Island. So what they're asking us to do is just be careful around them, um, look at them, but don't engage or feed them or encourage them in any way. wandering down to the shoreline have a look at this big lake. Fraser Island has a heap of lakes in the sand and they're called perch lakes and the way they're formed is they're actually way above the natural ocean water level and it's just fresh water captured within these lakes up high. You can get some other lakes down lower of course but the perch lakes are just sitting above sea level. Some lakes are blue some are golden brown and this is definitely a golden brown one. Great lake. Check it out. They've claimed their islands. 
Got to keep going though, we've got to get to Central Station. We're heading now towards Lake Birribeen. Just following on this sandy track amongst the, the forest here. It's a pretty unique piece of Australia, you can see that already. We're just making our way into the rainforest now, cruising through tracks. It's been good driving, there's been some soft bits definitely, but mostly pretty good. We haven't had to give it much and haven't really lost control at any point. Just a constant drive through, making sure we stick to that 30k speed limit. It's been really pleasant driving. We've just reached the Central Station campground. It's fenced and we were just discussing whether we could bring our car in, but you can. It's like a cattle sort of grid that they've got coming across the gate. And I guess this whole area here is all fenced. Nice. We're home. This is an awesome campsite. We've got a lap around the two campgrounds and I reckon we've got the good pick of them. There's a water tap just over here. Have a look at our campsite. So there's a toilet block in through over there. Big platform. Perfect for our tents. We turn around. There's the car. We're home, man. How quiet is it? Unreal. Just getting set up here in the campground. It's an awesome place. We're gonna have a good setup here. Two nights we've got to explore, I guess, the south and central part of Fraser Island. So that's our setup. We've got everything up out of the car. What we do is we put it all onto this tarp and then we can take it from the tarp, set the tents up, and then we're just finishing off setting up our camp kitchen. This is a beauty of a camp spot, love it. Have a bit of breakfast and then we're going to go off to Lake Mackenzie and have a bit of a swim. Go check that out. Hopefully it won't be too busy. It's just after 8. So if we get going shortly, we should hopefully beat the crowds. This is the Lake Mackenzie car park. It's massive. You can just imagine what it would be like when it's full. There's only a few cars here. What, 10 past 9? So hopefully it'll be fairly quiet for us down there to start with at least. We're just coming up to Lake Mackenzie. So you're not supposed to take food down here, just drinks is fine. Um, because of the dingoes, there is a picnic area up the top near your car. There's the water. that's been airbrushed. 
the distinction between that beautiful turquoise water and then the drop off into the deep water. It just happens really quickly and there's a real colour distinction. Jed just went out there and he said he couldn't see the bottom. He couldn't yeah, get down there. It, it was really deep, yeah? So this is magical. It's pretty busy here. It um, was pretty quiet when we first got here around 9 o'clock and then the two of us have started arriving but it's a massive lake so you've got plenty of room to have a swim and find yourself a bit of space along the crystal white beaches. The boys have spent the day out on a kayak cruising around. A couple of families had a ball. Central Station is um, quite pleasant through here. It's sort of tropical amongst these massive straight trees. This used to be a uh, station for processing timber and milk. All this massive alcorn. That's one of my favourite plants. Different walks you can do here from Central Station. Today we're going to do the Wangulba Creek boardwalk circuit. So that's going to take us around along the creek. And we could do the Pole Valley, but that's a much bigger one today. And given we had a whole day at the beach today or down at Mackenzie Creek, we're going to skip it. And then there's Basin Lake. So if you're going to stay here longer, there's quite a few pretty good walks you can do through some pretty awesome trails. That would cause injury or death. That's a big tree root. That's a map. Imagine when that was here. Look at the hole in the um, canopy. It's just gone. See any fish or anything? Check out this creek. It looks like it's sort of dirty and got a film on top, but it's actually so crystal clear that you can see the sand right through it. Looking down from up the top, it looks like it's, yeah, it's not very, very clear at all, but it's actually very deceiving. That water is so clear. Just looking at these palms that reach up in the sky and palms, these lines that you see on palms are actually from leaf scars. So as the palm tree grows up into the sky, racing for the sun, they grow new leaves, they grow taller each time, leaving these scars all the way out. That's what gives them their unique markings on the trunks. These are picker bean palms all the way through here in this rainforest and they're everywhere, fighting with all the other trees, the pines and the, and the eucalypts to, to get to the sky. This is a king fern here and these go back 300 million years old. There's fossils found of these same ferns. And there's three different types on the island, each in their own creek. So it's quite a rare plant and has its own particular habitat that it likes to live in. Just sitting down there in the water. You can continue around to Lake Mackenzie, but it's late in the day, so we're going back to Central Station. We've found the spot for the kids. <laughs> Dingo! <laughs> where all kids can come Dingo! along. Oh, Who's they're coming out. staying at the Satnay campground. We're just packing up and getting ready to move on. You can see there's heaps of sites through here, plenty of water um, options and even camp kitchens throughout. We're packing up and ready to head towards the Mahino Wreck and the Mahino campground. Tents are going away. We're going to shove everything up inside this box, get going on the road. We've just left the Central Station campground. Really well set up campground there. We had a great stay. And now we're heading along this purple road here, the Yurong Road. We're going to go and check out the Yurong area and then head up the beach here towards Eli Creek and the Merino Wreck today. The Yurong now, you can see we're back on a two way. So we've had mostly one way since Central Station. Now we're sharing the road and just got to be aware of oncoming traffic. Pulled into the shop here at Yurong Resort. Seven and Harry going in, we're going to get some bug spray and a few other supplies. It's quite a big resort, Yurong. A lot of people book in and stay here and use this as a base to travel around to the different things around the island. Uh, we're just going to grab a few things and keep on moving. So we're getting out. Apparently there's good pies. Boys couldn't resist. I've heard in everyone else's vlogs and videos that this is the spot for pies. So here we go. Pepper one. 
And a picker as well, please. Awesome. Guess look at it, it has turned around. Oh, that looks pretty good. This is the Yidney Rocks area, just south of Happy Valley, as you're heading up towards Eli Creek and the Mahino Wreck. We're here at low tide, or close to low tide, so the water's a fair way out, and we're just going to wait our way around the rocks here. This is one of the more unique landing strips that we've seen across Australia, we've seen a few in remote spots. This is one just off to our right here, so just between the cones they do have scenic flight flights, or for emergency flights as well. On Fraser Island you have to navigate not only the creeks, the sand, also planes. He's just, just tried to pull out on me there, managed to dodge him, we're all good. This will work. We found our campsite. We're at the Mahino Wreck or the Mahino Campground. The wreck is actually just down the road here. You can just see it over Harry's head. We're camping up right here on the beach. We've got some shade even under these trees. Keep some of the heat off the tents. And we've got access directly out onto the beach. Eli Creek is just that way. And the Mahino Wreck is just down there. It's just after seven in the morning. We've come to check out the Mahino Rack and we've got it all to ourselves, which is just what we hoped. So somewhere that's normally packed with people, nice and early and there's no one else on the beach. It's just like a majestic sight right at the waterline, the waves crash over it. Pretty special. This was a stranded ship with no buyers coming to buy it and they weren't really sure what was going to happen while it was sitting there off Fraser Island. Eventually the ship which was put out of service after 30 years, made 30 years worth of service, was pretty good, it was bought for £15,000 by a Japanese company and it was sitting just off Fraser Island ready to go when it broke its mooring and crashed here on the 75 mile beach on Fraser Island. Now it sits here for all to see. It had a great history. World War II, it was used for tourism, there was even a wedding, and it was also used for some mail tests, so sending mail around the world. The mail was quite unique. It was actually a rocket fired, sending 750 letters to the ship out at sea. That's pretty quick express mail. And just as we hoped, there's no one else here. So we have Eli Creek all to ourselves. Pretty special, we're going to make some breakfast and enjoy the morning. So the boys are going to have some fun on their own. A1 spot.
Tá certo? Perfect spot for supervision. We've got our coffees, we've got the beach, we've got the creek. And this is a great way to spend the morning having breakfast. Sure is. Out there surfing pizza like any other normal person. Oh, you've got a wave. Oh, he's going to hold on. You're going the wrong way. Tides just got high about half an hour ago, and uh, there's still some water coming into it before it starts going out. This is why you get there early. Eli Creek, a few hours after we've been here. Car park. It's sitting pretty right on the end though. Boys have set up all the inflatables and a beach beachfront shop going to try to sell them to some European tourists. So the aim is to get $20 a pizza, $5 a seal. To do that we get 50 bucks and what are we going to buy with the um, 50 bucks? We love pizza night. There we go. <laughs> Check this out for a campsite. I've got Alex behind me. Hi Al. Hi. He's cooking butter chicken. And then look at that. How is that for a kitchen? Oh my gosh. And then I'll turn around. We've got the tents right behind us. A little bit of wet washing. Another tent. We've got our pizzas from floating down Eli Creek today. There's Harry. Hi, Harry. There's our car. <laughs> and look, there's the water again. Wow, how is that? How cool is that? We're just coming up to Indian Head here. We're going to turn in, heading inland to cut across the back, aiming for our campsite, which is going to be at Waddy Point. Back to it. just got bogged here um, driving up the road it's really soft I've put it in a four low and I didn't have enough momentum and I got bogged I'm just gonna cry try crawl control I'm not gonna cry I'm gonna try crawl control to see if that'll get me out otherwise I'm gonna have to get the max tracks out to get myself out of here As you can see, we're pretty much dug in, particularly at the back here, so we just need to dig some sand out to get going. It's the first time we've been stuck on Fraser. At least it's not too hard to access the roof. It's actually quite low now. It's <laughs> the reason it's low. That's why. <laughs> I'm gonna start You're digging. driving on the beach, there's a good chance you might get bogged. In this case, we went too slow and we got stuck. So momentum's key. I'm just digging it out now getting the max tracks, put them under the tyre, and hopefully we'll pop on out. I don't know, we're on. With the max tracks in place, I'm going to give it one last go. If it doesn't work, I'll take my tyre pressures right down low, which then will make a fatter footprint again, probably down to around 12. So let me pop out of the sand. They pop out? No, the problem's the back. We're just pushing the sand. We're going to have to dig it out again. Oh, try backwards. Okay, ready? Yep. So we've got our backwards, just come around this little detour section, which is actually a lot harder. Get us through this section anyway. There we are. So the max tracks when you use them, you want a nice bright colour because this happens. This one's just sticking out. Over there somewhere is the other one. They do come with a handle, like a, a, um, you can grab it out with, but we'll look for it, find it first. Okay, we got out, I ended up putting the max tracks and just reversing my tracks. Sometimes if you can't go forward, we were acting like a plough, just pushing the sand in front of us. Hit reverse, backed it up, got back on the hard stuff. Now we're back at it. This time we're going to drive a momentum. You can see here, I've burned a couple of these notches off. The new max tracks actually have replaceable notches in their design. So this is still usable with this end, but uh, if that happens again in a few more spots, I'll need to replace the, the whole max tracks or maybe even modify it myself somehow. Maybe with uh, footy stops and our footy boots. There we go. Get through this soft 
stuff. And when we get back to the top of Champagne Pools, it was a little bit easier driving. It's just this section that's uh, particularly soft. I think we're good. Made it through that one. We are at the Wadi Point campground for the next two nights. I've just been and gone and had a shower with hot water for my $2 coin and even managed to wash my hair in that time. How good does that feel after three days of nice, not having a nice hot shower? I've just sent the boys off for a shower and I'm just cooking up some dinner while they're gone in the pot there. And next of all, I've got some greens that are ready to go into the pot when that do they're done. The men and the boys are all having steak. So what I do is I cook that up on our companion cooked up here. Let's grab it out of the bag. There we go. So it's this one here. It's a nice big one, fits the steak on or even some sausages or whatever meat they're having. And that just sits on top of the hot plate that we've got here. And then afterwards, we've just got a smaller hot plate that I'll pop some falafel on and some halloumi for myself. And that's dinner for tonight. Nice and easy. You can see the tents behind me. We're in a pretty nice campground. The beach is just down from us there. And this one does have a dingo fence around it as well. So nice and safe from the dingoes. Hey, how are you back? Hi. What's up? Um, I need my waterproof cover for my hand. You forgot your waterproof cover. All right. We're going to go get the waterproof cover for the cast. Only a few days left of the cast, thank goodness. Let's get it, Harry, so you can go for your shower. We've got two nights here at Wadi Point. We've already had one night, just having some lunch, and then we're going to go off and check out Champagne Pools. It's not very far from here. We're in a really good spot to explore, I guess, the tip or the northeast tip of Fraser Island. For lunch, guys. Wow, Steph, that's looking a bit fancy. <laughs> yeah, one's good actually. Put some extra uh, falafel last night at dinner, so I'm all we'll set with falafel and salad. We're on our last day, so the boys are up to some tuna and salmon in a tin. This is our rice cakes and cheese and stuff. This is our camp kitchen set up when we're on the road. Check out our video on what you really need to go camping. That's a new one we've uh, put out recently. You can see here our setup. We've got cooking, we've got water, we've got all the instruments we need. And we've done two weeks with this setup, just with the car, the tent, and the bush. We're up and at it, we're off to Champagne Falls. We've heard about this one. It's supposed to be an awesome spot. We're gonna go find a car park, paddle in some warm pools. It's a little bit overcast, but the sand is so hot. Down we go. Beautiful. This is Champagne Pools. We've timed our run for low tide. Should be perfect. They call this champagne pool because the waves break over the rocks. As you can see, looking like champagne bubbles drifting down into the pool. That was nicely timed. That was like that all the time. Here's what I prepared earlier. to ourselves in a couple of the little pools for a bit, which was pretty special. 
There was a lot of people there when we arrived, but the tour groups kind of clear out periodically. They're just in and out. They're not there for long. So if you hang out, then you end up getting some time to yourselves. We'll get back to camp, have our last night before heading back down the coast, looking for a ferry. It is our last day at camp on Fraser Island. We've got pancakes going. We're trying to keep the flies away. They seem to come out of the bush, Steph. They're really good at smelling the food when we cook it, funnily enough. So um, we're not skipping out on food. Pancakes are good for our last day meal for us. We keep all of our food in the back drawer here. This is our pantry. And we've gone all right. The boys have already had wheat mix this morning. We had some pancakes as well. You can see it's a bit desolate in there. This, uh, with the fridge, takes about two weeks worth of food when we're on the road. We sort of pack smartly and have canned stuff and use wraps. All in all, it's gone pretty well. We're going to pack up camp and then we're going to head back over the barge. Down the beach first, 75 mile beach, here we come. As you come off the ferry from Fraser Island, just in Rainbow Beach there is a car wash and air bay. So you can come around, get the air pumped up in your tyres, these guys are doing over there, and then when you come in, you pull in here and get the underbody wash, and it can be automatic or manual depending on what you want to do. These jets go back and forth underneath the body of the car, washing it. Steph's just doing some vacuuming, getting rid of that sand, and we'll be back to it. Back in the van, off to our next spot.